call to order. This is the fourth regular meeting of the 2010-2011 Common Council, and as is customary, our city clerk, Sue Richards, will read the quote of the evening. Thank you, Mayor. For changes to be of any true value, they've got to be lasting and consistent. Thank you, Sue. Roll call, please. Boren? Here. Bulk? Excused. Bowers? Here. Decker? Here. Gisha? Here. Hammond? Present. Hannah? Here. Heidemann? Here. Kopp? Here. Kittleson? Here. Montemayor? Here. Radke? Here. Rinfleisch? Excused. Vanderweel? Excused. Versi? Here. And Wonkeman? Here. 13 present. We have a quorum. Will Alderman Bowers please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Tom. Looking for approval of the minutes from the former Common Council meeting. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the minutes under discussion. There is no discussion on the minutes. Uh, we All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Resignations. Attorney McLean. <coughs> a letter dated April 28th from Robert Tim advising that he's uh, resigning from the Board of Appeals. <coughs> and a letter, email from uh, James Vieser advising that he's currently a non voting member of the Parks and Forestry Committee and he's asking that he step down from that position and be replaced by Sergeant uh, Reinecke. And third, an email from Steve Hemsing, uh, advising that he's not interested in serving on the park board. Is that all? Can we have a motion, please? Motion to accept the resignations. Second. We have a motion and a second to accept the resignations under discussion. If there is no discussion, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Mayor's appointments. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Honorable members of the council, I hereby submit the following appointment for your consideration. Sergeant Scott Reinecke to be considered for appointment to the Board of Parks and Forestry to fill the unexpired term of Captain James Vieser, whose term expires 4-22-2011. Signed by the Mayor. Uh, John Vandemal to be considered for appointment to the Board of Parks and Forestry <laughs> Commissioners as the City Planning Commission representative to fill the unexpired term of Stephen Hemsing, whose term expires 4-25-2011. Um, I believe we're going to take uh, Mr. Vandermal separately, President Gisha. Uh, Your Honor, I believe we'd like to take them both and ask for suspension of the rules, both for Parks and Forestry, as they have a meeting set uh, prior to the next action by Council. So I ask for suspension of the rules. Second. We have a motion and a second to spend the, suspend the rules on the two appointments uh, because of an upcoming meeting before the next Council meeting. We have a motion and a second. Is anybody opposed to suspending the rules? There is no opposition. The rules are suspended. Your Honor, I ask uh, uh, for uh, uh, these two appointments to be approved. Thank you. Second. We have a motion and a second on confirming the appointments. Alderman Hanna. Yeah, I just want to let you know that uh, I need to abstain from one of the appointments. Okay. We will take separate votes on the appointments then. Any further discussion? If there is none, uh, we will have a roll call first on Scott Reineke. On Scott Reineke. Roll call, please. Warren? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hammond? Abstain. Hannah? Abstain. Heideman? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Versi? Aye. And Wongaman? Aye. 11 ayes, 2 abstentions. Motion carries. And now the vote on Mr. Vandermeer. Roll call, please. 
Powers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kott? Aye. Gittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Versi? Aye. Wongaman? Aye. And Boren? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. Uh, further appointments? Attorney McLean? Thank you, Your Honor. There's uh, two letters from uh, Boyden County Board Chairman Mike Vandersteen. One is uh, reappointing Supervisor Val Schultz to serve as Boyden County's representative on the Marina and Harbor Committee. <coughs> and one advising that the, he has appointed following County Board Supervisors to serve on the City County Shared Services Committee for the 2010-2012 board term. Mick Anik, Keith Abler, and Peggy Fighter. And those lie over until the next Common Council meeting. That is all for appointments. Uh, do we have public forum this evening? Yes, we do. <clears throat> uh, first this evening will be Dulcie Johnson. Dulcie, if you could come up, please. Dulcie, can I get your home address, please? 1306 North 3rd Street, Sheboygan. <clears throat> and you will have five minutes. Thank you. <clears throat> Mayor Ryan, City Clerk Richards, City Attorney McLean, members of the council, and citizens. On April 7th, the council voted to not lift the hiring freeze to hire three firefighter paramedics. Chief Herman had requested the hires to continue the ambulance service. He stated that he did not need any more firefighters, but needed more paramedics. He also stated with the, that with a new pumper truck, which the council has authorized, and without the ambulance service, he would not need any additional hires. In other words, without the ambulance service and without hiring any additional firefighters, we would not have to close stations on a rotating basis as the department is doing now. <clears throat> Finance Director Terry Hansen stated that the three hires would be expensed to the ambulance service. Because the council did not agree to hire the three firefighter paramedics, and in order to not incur heavy overtime expenses, the council voted, per Chief Herman's request, to take one ambulance out of service, resulting in a considerable savings to the taxpayers. The salary and benefit cost of the three hires at, 20, at 2010 rates was stated to be $180,000. In 2011, firefighter paramedics will receive a 3% pay raise in addition to a 4% premium for anyone with a paramedic license and another 2% for hours spent doing ambulance work. So personnel costs in 2011 would likely be higher than the $180,000. The cost of leasing the ambulance is just a little under $30,000. At the April 19th council meeting, Alderman Bauck asked Chief Herman what the cost would be of taking one ambulance out of service. Chief Herman replied that in a full year, the third ambulance would answer 175 to 200 calls, resulting in $80 to $100,000 in billable fees with 40% or $32,000 to $40,000 collectible. So we would have expenses in 2010 of $210,000 and revenues of $40,000. Simple arithmetic tells me that that would be a loss and a cost to the taxpayers of $170,000 to operate the third ambulance. <clears throat> Mayor Ryan campaigned saying he wanted to run the city as a business. He spoke of it again on April 20th when the new council was installed. Mayor Ryan and several aldermen are or were business owners. Alderman Boren, Alderman Bowers, Alderman Hammond, Alderman Hanna, Alderman Montemayor, Alderman Radke, Alderman Versi. Would any of you negotiate, choose, or agree <coughs> to a situation whereby your business would lose $170,000 a year? No business could afford to lose $170,000 year after year. The taxpayers, your constituents, cannot afford to either. The writing on the wall is clear. Thank you. Thank you, Dulcie. Thank you, Dulcie. Next. Next will be Milt Storm.
Mills, can I have your home address, please? Yes, it's 1736 Marvin Court. And you will have five minutes, sir. Thank you. I want to thank the mayor and the council members to address this body. I certainly want to thank Sue Richards and the ladies of her department. Maybe the mayor and the council can probably furnish them a better area to work in and compensate them for the efficient way that the city clerk department is run. I'm on a roll here. <laughs> in July of 2003, Officer Todd Preby and his partner from the community policing unit appeared before the council at that time. The purpose was to form a group of volunteer citizens known as Neighbors Against Drugs to assist the police department and our Sheboygan County Sheriff's Department in abating illegal drug activities in our Sheboygan neighborhoods. I've been a member of NAD for those seven years. Some of the statements and observations I make this evening are, not, are my own and not reflective of the NAD mem members and our leadership. Since 2003, Neighbors Against Drugs has been very successful in assisting the police and the sheriff's department in ridding illegal drug activities from Sheboygan neighborhoods. Our group records show in seven years we have eliminated 100 drug houses in areas where drug activity was taking place. About two and a half years ago, I was a survey volunteer for the Sheboygan Pride Incorporated, a nonprofit group that regulates our NAD group. A project known as the Gateway Neighborhood was formed with our primary leaders being Assistant City Attorney Chuck Adams and Officer Todd Preby. At our last NAD meeting, we discussed our new police chief's interest in the Gateway Neighborhood and how our police department can become more friendly and visible in targeted neighborhoods. For those not familiar with the Gateway Neighborhood, it encompasses a five to four block area starting at 9th and Erie Avenue across from Fountain Park, then west on Erie to 14th Street, north on 14th Street to Superior, then east to 9th Street, and ending up at Fountain Park Methodist Church. So in the future, if you see more police officers and NED members walking through your neighborhoods, I don't want you to be alarmed. We are only trying to improve your neighborhoods for the residents and the businesses of your area. I am not suggesting that we establish a utopia community here in Sheboygan, but if we work together in <laughs> harmony with our neighbors, we just might get a little closer to paradise. A few times I've been told to go to that other place and I really don't care to go there. <laughs> I assume these persons must know that place quite well. I thank you for your, I thank you for your patience. Thank you, Milton. Thank you, Milton. Next. Uh, last on the list would be Chase Longmiller. Chase, can I have your home address, please? 2611 Rolling Meadows Drive. Rolling Meadows. Okay. You'll have five minutes. <clears throat> Mr. Mayor and members of the council, my name is Chase Longmiller, and as president of the Sheboygan Firefighters Union, I stand before you this evening to encourage you to lift the hiring freeze and hire the four firefighters the Sheboygan Fire Department is currently short. Currently, the Common Council is considering five proposals regarding the structure of the Sheboygan Fire Department. The question is, what is an appropriate level of protection for a city our size? In the proposals before you, the two with the lowest deficits are options D and E. However, they are polar opposites in the protection and safety they offer. People should be concerned with option E. In option D, you face a potential deficit of $2 million. In option E, you face a deficit of $1.4 million, a cumulative difference of $600,000 over 10 years. However, option E decreases the amount of fire protection by 21 firefighters, which is nearly one-third of your city's fire department. That is the lowest level of protection ever seen in Sheboygan, a level that is below adequate and below what is safe for our residents, visitors, and firefighters. And this is being done to realize a savings of $60,000 a year in a $30 million budget. Does it make sense to reduce our staffing of our fire department by one third for $60,000? <clears> Improved technological advances that assist firefighters don't outweigh the new challenges of lightweight building construction, advancement of hazard materials, vehicle extrications, and confined space requirements, just to name a few. Under alternative E, response times will greatly increase. The department will go from a response time average of under three minutes to upwards of six minutes or more. 
The ability of this department to initiate rescues as we did with Cassandra Lehman, who was pulled from a fire on 14th Street a few years ago, will be put in serious jeopardy. Emergencies require immediate and adequate responses to mitigate them with the least amount of loss and the greatest chances of survival to those involved. Fires that used to be minimal can now be, become total loss fires with this proposal. Mind you, these are not threats. These are the realities as we, your educated and experienced experts, see it. With the addition of the <clears throat> ambulance service, the service has greatly increased. It has returned much needed revenue to the city and more importantly, it is providing a level of service higher than ever. To have a minimum of four, pick, four people quickly at an EMS call who are all part of the same service, training and working together for decades instead of weeks is far better than two from any other system. There may be some among you who have philosophical differences concerning the ambulance. However, in these current economic times, is it best to get rid of a system which is not only providing superior service, but a source of revenue as well? Is it better for a user fee, which will be charged regardless of who operates the service, to go to a corporation or to the tax relief of the city taxpayer? Of the 19 cities cited in the report from the city finance department, only two do not run the ambulance in their cities. Ask yourself why none of these cities are currently considering getting rid of their service, even with their own tough budget issues. Ask yourself why the city would do this if all that would be done would be re to realize a savings of $60,000 a year in a $30 million budget. Does it make sense to reduce staffing of our fire department by one-third for $60,000 a year? The only plan that makes sense is to staff the fire department appropriately so that the city can continue to generate revenue and provide excellent fire and EMS protection. Please hire these much needed firefighters. Thank you. Thank you, Chase. Thank you, Chase. Is that all for public forum? That would be it. <clears throat> okay, now on to uh, my favorite time, the mayor's announcements time, we all know. Um, we will keep this brief tonight. Uh, a couple of uh, different items here. Um, number one, uh, Alderman Boren wanted everybody to know that the uh, that uh, uh, Finance Director Terry Hansen's uh, report on the fire department is available on the city website. So if anybody would like to view that in its entirety, it is a, a great late night reading if, uh, if you're interested. Um, also, uh, the Sheboygan firefighters uh, will be taking on the Green Bay Packers. Uh, luckily, it is, in, it is in an upcoming softball tournament. Uh, that will be, uh, that is open to the public. It will be on May 23rd at 2 p.m. at Wilson Park at 1601 West Howard Avenue in Milwaukee. Um, should be a great event. Um, this was because they, uh, they uh, took a second place finish at last year's uh, softball event, so now they have the opportunity to play the Packers. Uh, tickets are $15 each or $45 for a family of five. So that could be, that is a, uh, a great event. Uh, you also have uh, the chance to get uh, your items autographed by the uh, Green Bay Packer players. Um, for more information, we have a number here, Roger Sager at 946-4199, if anybody would like any more information on that. Uh, moving on, um, I have another announcement, and this one I, uh, I, I make with uh, some trepidation. Um, unfortunately, our... Uh, Finance Director Terry Hansen, uh, who I have known uh, since uh, he's come to the city and uh, definitely sp have spent a lot of time with since I've become the mayor, uh, is resigning as of, uh, as of June 4th. Uh, don't worry, he's not going anywhere. He's just moving over to the county to take on their position. So uh, basically the county has stolen them away from us. So uh, I congratulated Terry that he will be working with uh, with. Uh, Budget twice the size of the cities and a deficit three times the size. So I'm sure he's uh, got a lot to look forward to. Uh, but Terry is, uh, has been a, uh, a, a pleasure to work with. Uh, one of the most stand-up people I've met in the city. He's, uh, his heart is in the job. He's going to be uh, sorely missed. And unfortunately, I don't know if we're going to be able to replace him with the same caliber person, seeing as the county and all their applications decided to pick our, our finance director. But uh, he will be uh, greatly missed. Um, luckily, we will still be able to uh, use him for some advice here and there, probably. But uh, uh, hats off to you, Terry. You've done a great job for the city, and we will miss you.
And that is all we have for the mayor's time of pontification this evening. <laughs> Moving on, um, the consent agenda. We'll be taking 4-1 through 4-16. President Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that we accept and file all reports of officers, accept and adopt all reports of committees, and pass all resolutions and ordinances. Second. We have a motion and a second under discussion on the consent agenda. If there is none, roll call, please. Decker. Aye. Gisha. Aye. Hammond. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heidemann. Aye. Koth. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Ratke. Aye. Versi. Aye. Wangaman. Aye. Boren. Aye. And Bowers. Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. Communications and petitions 417 to be referred. <coughs> Reports of officers 2. 418 by City Planning Commission recommending that the council place the petition to terminate the bid district on file as the supporters of the petition represent less than 50% of the total value of real estate in the bid subject to assessment. And as such, the petition is insufficient to require the City Council to terminate the bid. Alderperson Montemayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the RCBA accepted and filed. Second. We have a motion and a second under discussion. If there is none, roll call please. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Epstein? Versi? Aye. Wonkman? Aye. Boren? Aye. And Bowers? Aye. 12 ayes, one abstention. Motion carries. Uh, 419 through 430 to be referred. Resolutions introduced three, 4 31 by Alderman Gisha, authorizing the issuance and sale of up to 2,947,632 <coughs> sewage system revenue bond series 2010A and providing for other details and covenants with respect thereto. President Gisha. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second under discussion. Uh, Your Honor, this, uh, this was taken up obviously at the last Finance Committee meeting, um, and the uh, sewerage issue has been one that uh, Bill Bittner had been discussing and working on for quite a lengthy period of time, and now it's time to get it done. Thank you. Very good. Uh, Alderman Bowers, do you have a comment on this? Yes. Uh, the two million nine hundred forty-seven thousand dollars, approximately. Do we have any idea how uh, much of the sewers will be corrected? President Gisher, would you like to? Uh, uh, as I am not up on the sewer linkage, I'll ask uh, Director Bittner if the council would to uh, speak to that. Uh, Director of Public Works, Bill Bittner, will answer that question. loan represents uh, the work that's being done on what we call the Western Interceptor, which is a very large pipe with up to 42 inches, and it's being rehabbed from basically the wastewater plant uh, all the way west past the interstate. A big share of it is, uh, uh, serves our outlying communities, <coughs> and, and the payback, the city is actually about 42% that we, we have agreements to pay for the rest with our, our neighboring communities. Did that answer your question, Alderman Bowers? Thank you, Bill. Any further discussion? If there is none, roll call, please. Gisha? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Cott? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Versi? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bowers? Aye. And Decker? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. We are going to take 4-33 before we do 4-32. 4-33 by Alderpersons Gisha, Balk, Boren, Radke, and Hammond authorizing the appropriate city officials to enter into contract for obtaining independent financial consulting services. President Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. second. We have a motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage under discussion. Um, oh, yes. I believe this just came in 
for the first time this evening. You're yes. absolutely right. We have to suspend the rules. If I may, I apologize. Uh, asking for suspension of the rules, second. if I could back the train up here briefly. We have a motion and a second to suspend the rules. Would you like to explain the suspension? I would, suspension? But, uh, although Alderperson Ryan Flesh isn't here, in honor of him, I'll uh, do the suspension of the uh, reasoning for suspension, is uh, what you're seeing on the other items on the agenda tonight, and that is the issuance of these bonds are of a timely na nature. And we need the, the contract board. before the issuance of the Correct. bonds, obviously. Is there anybody opposed to suspending the rules? If there's no opposition, the rules are suspended. President Kisha. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage under discussion. If I may, Your Honor, uh, if, for those of you who are not familiar with Ehlers & Associates, uh, they've served as financial advisor for 125 Wisconsin uh, municipal bond sales last year. They are ranked... Uh, basically number one in sales volume, not by total put out, by number of issuances. Uh, they represent about 48.8% of total issues uh, in the state of Wisconsin and have a, have a marvelous reputation. Thank you, President Gisha. Any further discussion? If there is none, roll call please on 433. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Versi? Aye. Wonkaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. And Gisha? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. Now we will do 4 32 by Alderperson Gisha, authorizing the issuance and providing for the sale of 2,045,000 general obligation promissory notes and 8,345,000 taxable general obligation refunding bonds. President Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. I don't believe we need to suspend the rules on this. No, we don't. Um, Attorney McLean? I don't know. There again, this hasn't been before the council as a resolution. I don't believe it has. Yeah. And if it is the expenditure of funds, we need to suspend and, the rules. And uh, I guess going back, we should probably do that on 431. Why don't we do it on both of them simultaneously? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> That's certainly fine with me if it's fine with the chair. Uh, we are looking at uh, needing to suspend on 431 and 32. Yeah. Yes, Steve. Your Honor. Yes. Okay. So I'm asking for a formal suspension on second those two items. Thank you. Formal suspension on 431 and 432. Is anybody opposed to suspending the rules, or does anybody require any further explanation? The rules are suspended. Thank you, Your Honor. I'm not sure if you, you want to take, obviously you want to take these separately. Uh, based on 431, I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. A motion to second on 431 once again. Um, uh, Your Honor, we certainly can speak to what we're, what we're doing and why we're doing it. Uh, if there's any additional questions, uh, Director Hansen is here. Uh, we're utilizing uh, the potentially uh, Build America bonds. We're refinancing some bonds, plus the $2,045,000 has to do with our bonding for capital improvements, which we approved at the last committee meeting. Is everybody good with that? Does anybody require any further explanation? We may retake the roll call on, do we need to redo 431? No, we do not. Uh, just on 432, roll call, please. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Ratke? Aye. Bercy? Aye. Wongaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. And Hammond? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries 4 34 by Alder Persons. Gisha, Bout, Boren, Hammond, and Ratke establishing the 2011 budget calendar. President Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, uh, Director Hansen, are you still good with this budget calendar? All right, great, thanks. <laughs> yeah, hence the, uh, Better than ever. Hence the comment, uh, Your <laughs> Honor. Two quick comments, if I may. One is, it is uh, starting earlier this year at your direction. Um, there is a, a gap for catch up, as you can see, through the calendar time and based on, on uh, Terry bailing on us, uh, we <laughs> respectfully, uh, he, uh, uh, and his new opportunity uh, will probably need that catch up time. In addition, the Finance Committee will be working um, in a uh, more of informal session mode 
on uh, our next finance committee meeting in working on the, as you see under the May of 2010, very first item, establishing budget schedule and guidelines uh, for submission to the Common Council. So any, uh, uh, anyone with interest or input on those guidelines, such as we did last year, we'll be doing it at Monday's finance meeting. Very good. Thank you, President Kisha. Any further discussion? If there is none, all in favor of approving the budget calendar say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, 4-35 to be referred. Report of Committee 6, 4-36 by Public Protection and Safety, forwarding the document by the City Clerk submitting incident detail, incident detail prints, Sheboygan Police Department, and a summary of ambulance response times for the period <coughs> 1 1 10 through 3 31 10, submitted by Alder Minversi to the Common Council for action with no recommendation from the Committee on Public Protection and Safety. Who would like to take this? Here. Vice President Kittleson. Thank you, Mayor. I would ask for a motion to accept and adopt this report of committee. Second. We have a motion and a second to accept and adopt. And then under discussion here, the, uh, it was uh, brought up in the committee. It was a, uh, there was no recommendation from the committee on what, what to do with this document. There was a tie vote on it. So um, I guess what would council's pleasure be uh, regarding this document from right. all so, the uh, So the committee uh, obviously had an even number of four people in the committee and uh, it was and a deadlock vote. It deadlocked, right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very good. Okay. Any further discussion? Yep. Alderman Versi. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd just like to have it referred to uh, Committee of the Whole for further discussion. I did get uh, more reports to go along with this, and there were some more discrepancies that need to be issued. Second. I, we have a motion and a second to refer to Committee of the Whole. Now, under discussion on that, President Gisha. I certainly wouldn't have any problem with, with supporting referring to the Committee of the Whole, but if there's additional discrepancies and questions, that work is to be done in committee, and then a finished product brought to Committee of the Whole so we can actually discuss the finished document. So I won't support going to Committee of the Whole. I'll support, uh, actually, if that fails, I'll make a motion to send it back to committee so the committee can make some sort of recommendation. Otherwise, what are we acting on in Committee of the Whole? Raw data uh, that, that still needs to be vetted out. That's what's done in committee. Okay. Uh, under further discussion for sending to the Committee of the Whole, Alderman Bowers, did you have a comment on that? Yes. Uh, I recommend it go to the Committee of the Whole because if it goes back, the committee is going to come back and with no recommendation again. Matter of fact, it won't be recommended at all, I, I say. Uh, actually, if it goes back to committee and all committee members are present, it would have to come back with a recommendation one way or the other. It was because there was a committee member right. absent that it came back with no recommendation. It was a tie vote. Mm -hmm. uh, under further discussion, uh, we are discussing sending this document to the committee of the whole. Um, can we do a roll call, please, on that? I don't think yes. we'll have a unanimous vote. Okay, under discussion just for sending this document to the committee of the whole. Heideman? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? No. Montemayor? No. Radke? Aye. Versi? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? No. Gisha? Nope. Hammond? No. And Hannah? No. Seven eyes, six no's. It goes to the Committee of the Whole. Reports of Committees 7. 4-37 by law and licensing recommending denying taxi cab driver's license application number 8547 based upon the applicant's failure to include all relevant convictions on the application and the failure to cooperate with the committee. Alder Person Koth. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. I move to accept and adopt the report of committee. Second. We have a motion and a second to accept and adopt the report of committee. Is Megan Davis here? Um, this applicant was called twice before the committee and she did not appear. Okay, so the applicant did not appear before the committee even though she was notified. Any further discussion? If there is none, roll call please. Cut. Oh. <laughs> um, aye. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Versi? Aye. Wonkaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hammond? 
Aye. Hannah? Aye. And Heidemann? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries 4 38 by law and licensing recommending denying taxi cab driver's license number application number 8546 based upon the applicant's failure to cooperate with the committee. Alderperson Koth. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. I move to accept and adopt the report of the committee. Second. We have a motion and a second to accept and, ado and adopt. Um, is Doris Fry here? Uh, Doris, if you'd like to. Uh... Alderperson Koth, if you may uh, explain why the application was denied. Well, here's the thing. Doris had uh, two, two times to come before our committee and did not. And uh, so I'm going to go before the uh, city attorney if you could. I don't have the documentation out in front of us as far as uh, the taxi. Uh, I do understand that Ms. Fry called our office late okay. this afternoon. And uh, I guess she got the letter saying uh, to be present here if she wished. Uh, I can't, perhaps she can explain why she did not appear at the committee, but I guess uh, my suggestion might be to the committee members that uh, you have this referred back to the committee and uh, if Ms. Fry is gonna show up there and discuss the issues at the committee level. Uh, Ms. Fry, may you? Uh you may speak and, and explain why you did not respond to the committee's request. Um, the first time I, I had to take my mom to Milwaukee, um, she was having surgery, and I did call and leave a message saying that I wouldn't be able to make it. And this last time, uh, um, I was babysitting, and I knew I had to be in court, and the person, my niece, knew I had to be in court and she swore she was going to be home and she didn't come until quarter after five and I was already late. Okay, do we have any uh, further questions? I, I would just say, Your Honor, that, uh, that it's accurate that uh, for the first meeting she did call saying she wouldn't be able to attend and could reschedule it for a second meeting and uh, I hadn't heard the explanation for the second meeting. but. Thank you, Attorney McLean. Uh, is there, are there any questions? Alderman Bourne. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor Ryan. I'll make a motion to refer this uh, back to the law and licensing for further consideration. Second. Second. We have a motion and a second to refer back to law and licensing. Is there any further discussion? Thank you, Ms. Fry. You may sit down. Thank you. On the referring back to law and licensing, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? It will go back to law and licensing. <laughs> Reports of committees eight, 4-39 by finance, recommending authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2010 budget economic development land acquisition. President Kisha. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted and the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage. Alderman Bowers. This will be in reference to 39, 40, and 41. I have down here costs. Could someone please uh, advise what the costs we're looking at here? If this is an internal transfer, is this additional money or is this money that's already been appropriated? Uh, if I may. President Gisham. <laughs> Your Honor, uh, it, we're, we're dealing with document uh, 39. 39 right uh, now, right. Uh, document 39 um, authorizes the transfer into an economic development land acquisition account of which the funds would not be expended until it's less and until it's authorized by the Common Council. So there are no dollars being spent in, in 439. This is for uh, future land acquisition. And uh, 40 and 41 can be discussed when they come up. Is there any other comment on 4-39? Any further discussion? If there is none, roll call, please. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Versi? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Foran? Aye. Powers? <coughs> Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. And Koth? Aye. 
13 eyes. Motion carries 4-40 by finance recommending authorizing a transfer of appropriation in the 2010 budget establishing appropriation for the 2010 capital improvements program. President Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. I move the report of committee be accepted and adopted and the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second under discussion. Uh, to answer uh, Alderman uh, Bauer's question from earlier, uh, the money spent on the capital improvement program was were unanimously approved by this body uh, at our last <coughs> common council meeting uh, and uh, follows the appropriations that were discussed in the budget resolution, that being $2 million. You saw in the previous documents when it came to the establishing the uh, bonding that ties into that. It comes out to $2,045,000 with amortization expenses and, and uh, upfront costs. So that would be the answer as to how much it's costing. Thank you, President Gisha. Any further discussion? If there is none, roll call, please. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Versi? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hanna? Aye. Heidemann. Aye. Koth. Aye. And Kittleson. Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. 4-41. Uh, uh, we need a motion to refer that back to finance. If I may, refer, refer to finance, please. Do we have a second? Second. A motion and a second on 4-41 to refer back to finance to uh, do a little fine tuning on that. Mm -hmm. Any discussion? All in favor to refer back to finance say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. 4-42, ordinance introduced 10, 442 lies over. Other matters authorized by law, Attorney McLean. 4-43 is submitting a communication from Beverly and Henry Schaefer stating that they want the city to get out of the ambulance business and get back to providing fire protection only for the citizens. That will go to uh, PPNS, Strategic Fiscal Planning and the Committee of the Whole. 4-44 is submitting a communication from Richard Themey asking all the person born to support the fire department having five, five stations and no ambulance service. That will go to PPNS Strategic Fiscal Planning and Committee of the Whole. 445 submitting a communication from Jeff Giffen, commander of the Sheboygan Yacht Club, excuse me, Commodore of the Sheboygan Yacht Club, stating their concerns relating to the lease that the city is currently negotiating with the Wisconsin Naval Ship Association, WINSA. Referred to Public Works. 446 is <clears throat> submitting from Alderperson Boren an article from the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel entitled Get Healthy or Else. Uh, going to group health and salary and grievances. 4-47 is an article from Alderperson Boren submitted by Dulcie Johnson from the Barron's cover entitled The $2 Trillion Hole. Referred to finance, public protection and safety and salary and grievances. 4-48 is a communication from Jennifer Houdon, City Clerk of the City of Manitowoc, stating that they have passed a resolution accepting Sheboygan's non-motorized mileage challenge. That will go to the Sheboygan Sustainable Task Force and the Wellness Committee. 4-49 is a communication from Richard Coomer and Laura Lawrence of Route 43 Harley-Davidson, requesting that they continue to run the Roar on Sheboygan Shores and making various <coughs> requests to the city. Referred to PPNS and Public Works. 450 is an application for waiver of the sexual offender residency restrictions for Bobby Dudley. Referred to Public Protection and Safety. 451 is an application for waiver of the sexual offender residency restrictions for Bonifacio Ordonez. Referred to PPNS. 452 is an application for waiver of the sex offender residency restrictions for George Burt. Referred to PPNS. 453 is submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2011 and June 30, 2012. Will be referred to law and licensing. 454 submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2011. Also going to law and licensing. 455 is an RO by the fire chief. Pursuant to Section 50-496 of the Municipal Code, I herewith submit my report of departmental activity for the period commencing January 1, 2010 and ending March 31, 2010. Referred to Public Protection and Safety. 456 is a resolution approving amendment to Engineering Services Agreement for digester mixing and solids thickening improvements and authorizing the purchasing agent or appropriate city official to execute same. Always a great subject to refer to Public Works. 
<laughs> 457, it's a resolution lifting the hiring freeze in order to hire a finance director treasurer. Will be referred to salary and grievances. 458 is a resolution authorizing the purchase of vacant property located <laughs> at the northeast corner of 10th and Erie, 936 Erie Avenue, a.k.a. the former body shop of Sheboygan LLC property. Will be referred to city planning and finance. 459 is an RC by strategic fiscal planning. Uh, your committee to whom was referred RO number 29-11. I assume that's 10-11 by the finance director submitting the Sheboygan Fire Department Ambulance Service Alternative Scenarios and Benchmarking Analysis recommends that a copy of the document be referred to the Special Budget Subcommittee. Will be referred to the Super Special Budget Subcommittee. <laughs> Alderman Boren. Thank you, uh, Mayor Ryan. Uh, I'm not going to support this being uh, uh, sent to the subcommittee. In fact, I'd like it voted on tonight whether it would be submitted if we can do that. Okay, before we pack everything up here, uh, on the final document here, which is the uh, uh, Fire Department uh, Ambulance <coughs> Service um, report done by Director Hansen, Alderman Boren would like that referred to the Strategic Fiscal Planning Committee? Uh, we, well, we already have it. Okay. Strategic Fiscal Planning is referring this to the subcommittee and uh, uh, I voted against sending this to the subcommittee in, in, uh, at the Strategic Fiscal Planning Committee because, in my opinion, it's nothing more than a delay tactic. Uh, strategic Fiscal Planning, has, it's, a, it's in our job description to go ahead and deal with this subject. And uh, I see, with all due respect to Alderman Decker and his co-chairman, Alderman Balk, I see no reason for it to go to their subcommittee. It's in our job description to deal with this. And uh, I want to deal with this issue with the fire department the sooner the better for the benefit uh, of the fire department and the citizens. Let's get on with it and let's get it over with. It doesn't have to be referred. In fact, I thought we were having a meeting tomorrow night on strategic fiscal planning, but I haven't seen an, uh, an agenda passed yet or posted yet. Okay, so, so I'm not going to be supporting the referral. So we have a motion uh, to keep it in strategic fiscal planning. President Kisha. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, we did vote to move it to our subcommittee. When I say our, uh, this council voted unanimously to establish a subcommittee to look at budgetary options. This certainly qualifies as a budgetary option. Uh, we asked uh, a number of questions in strategic fiscal planning that we had charged our subcommittee to, uh, to look into regarding this specific subject. It's their job. Taking it away from a committee that we all voted unanimously to give them the right to do this and the, uh, and the charge to do this and many other budget things didn't really make a lot of sense to me. Then why did we set them up to do that? Uh, the, uh, we heard from the chairman of that committee, and he's in attendance tonight. That's Alderman Decker. He can speak for himself, but he asked specifically that the data come to them so that they can do their work. I don't believe in cutting committees off uh, and their ability to do their work, and we've <coughs> asked them to do it. Why are we taking the tools away from them? Thank you, President Gisha. Alderman Hanna? Uh, well, thank you. I received a phone call tonight from uh, Gary Maples from the Greater Sheboygan Committee, uh, and he asked to make sure we slow down and get all the information and get all the answers. <coughs> you know, we're not really slowing down. We're trying to get the answers. Uh, so I don't see it as a stall tactic. Uh, we're trying to find out the impact to public safety at each one of the choices. We know the financial answers. Now give us the impact of public safety at each of those scenarios. Okay. As much as I uh, respect Mr. Maple's opinion, it must be noted he is not a city resident nor a, a property owner in the city. I knew you were going to say this. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Alderman Boren. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Again, I just want to reiterate that I'm on the Strategic Fiscal Planning Committee, to, and that is for a reason. And that is because I'm a committee chairman and I'm, I'm there to make tough decisions. I'm not looking for any political cover. I want to take this issue of the bull by the horns and let's get it over with. Uh, the, the information on public safety, the, the public safety card is going to be played ad nauseum and that's part of the discussion. And I'm willing to do that and have that discussion. But let's do it at strategic fiscal planning. Uh, let's have as many meetings as necessary. And if, if people from the budget, the subcommittee want to attend our meetings or any other alder person or any other citizen, that's fine. But let's get it on. Let's get it over with. Let's have some meetings and let's settle it once and for all. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Boren. Alderman Versi. 
Thank you, Your Honor. Um, this is kind of a double-edged sword for everybody. Every, yes, it's a big rush, but yes, we need to take our time and look at all the scenarios. Um, I, to my understanding, the subcommittee has a June 4th deadline, and sitting in with their last committee, they have their hands full, and it's going to be tough for them to meet that deadline the way it is. So keeping this with not going to the subcommittee might be a better option to hash out those options a little bit faster and let them keep dealing with what they have been doing. Thank you, Alderman Versi. President Gisha? Uh, I'll just ask once again that the committee process be somewhat respected. Uh, Alderman Decker can speak for himself whether they can deal with this information or want to deal with this information. Stated very, very clearly at the <coughs> committee meeting, asked for the information. So we're now gonna take a chairman of a subcommittee and say, no, you can't do that. And uh, I will take a slight issue with the public safety card being played that was stated earlier. Public safety to me isn't a card. You can say what you want about, about staffing, manning, or whatever. It's our number one priority as, as a council to ensure public safety. I know we have to balance that with our ability to pay and right-sizing of departments, but that's not a card. That's a, that's a very deep and emotional responsibility that I take very seriously. And that's why I believe the committee, chaired by Alderman Decker, would, uh, would give us the needed data that the strategic, strategic Fiscal Committee, Planning Committee asked for. Thank you, President Gisha. We have no further lights. Any further discussion? I think we'll do a roll call on this one. I think I need to say something first. Oh, first who would like to uh, get, set us all straight. This may, yeah, right. This may just clear up the issue. Um, as a point of order, this is not on the agenda. This is in other matters. It's not noticed to the public. But it was a very nice discussion. It was a nice discussion. <laughs> discussion. Um, I couldn't just said that five minutes ago. <laughs> well, I, was I was trying to kind of interrupt, but the other point is, is that I did read the minutes from, it was from Strategic Fiscal, and the minutes recommended, I believe it was three to one or four to one, one or whatever, and that's the basis for this document, which is why a copy of this, as directed by the committee, is sent to the subcommittee just so that you're all clear that's the direction that I got. That's why this is here. However, this really shouldn't be anything happened to it in my opinion. It's not on the agenda and it has not been noticed to the public. So to act on this and to do something with this in my opinion is, that's my opinion. Attorney McLean. Okay. Yeah, with all due respect to uh, the city clerk, I don't think you're acting on anything formal. The question is which committee does it go to? Mm -hmm. And I think that's a legitimate uh, decision at this point. Uh, Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Never seen um, that happen. I, I've never I, seen this happen I either. Say, though, <laughs> the, the document the, is to refer it to the special budget subcommittee, and I think that should be what's on the floor okay. for referral. Okay. Uh, this could be a good discussion. Sue? Um, well, and the other thing, Steve and I have talked about this. The it was presented just as a matter of record. It was presented as uh, the, the subcommittee as a, a subcommittee of strategic fiscal planning. That is not accurate. You, that is not a committee of strategic fiscal planning. If it were a, a subcommittee of that group, that committee would consist of members of the strategic fiscal planning committee. So I think just to make it clear, this subcommittee is a separate committee. It is not the little committee below strategic for strategic, strategic fiscal, it would have to be the members of strategic. Mm -hmm. That's just a side issue and I- But they report back to strategic fiscal planning based on the resolution that was introduced. Right, but it is a separate committee. It is Understand. not strategic. Understood. And you know, I, I just thought I would bring up the fact that it's not on the agenda. I bow to Steve because he knows. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't, you don't need to bow. <laughs> this is gonna cost you. This is gonna cost Steve doesn't want to be bowed to, Steve. <laughs> Should we settle it with a coin flip? No. no? no. Okay. We will take uh, Attorney McLean's advice and we will allow it to go to a vote. Roll call, please. So we are voting to... We are voting. Um, the motion by Alderman Boren was to not send it to the, to the special subcommittee. So we're voting on the document, we're not on the, on the motion. Document. We're voting on the document, right. On the, Oh, the, no, we're, not, we're, we're voting on the document being referred to or the not. special yes. budget right. subcommittee, or not. Right. Right. So and I vote means and I vote means that going to the special and, going budget. to the subcommittee. An I vote will mean it's going to the subcommittee. A no vote means it will not. Okay. 
Could I okay. have who seconded that, please? Second. Right. Jean thirded it. <laughs> All right. Okay. Good. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Versi? No. Wangaman? Aye. Foran? No. Bowers? No. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? No. Koth? No. Kittleson? Aye. Eight to five. To the subcommittee it goes. Motion to adjourn. Second. second. Motion and a second to adjourn. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you, everybody.